So for those of you who are not familiar, we are running a uh, battle arena tournament right now. Uh, there's basically all of the Crowfall things squeezed down into like a half an hour match. Uh, it's 12 teams. Each team has five players. Um, you, uh, you can either, for the tournament, we're having preset archetypes so that everybody starts on a normal playing field. In the normal version of the Hunger Dome battle mode, you can either take one of those pre pre-built characters or you can bring in your character from the MMO, uh, which means that you have complete control over your customization in terms of your promotion class, your talents, your attribute points, and your disciplines. Um, so it's a really fun game mode. It's really cool. As a reminder, the reason that we thought uh, Hunger Dome was cool for this game is um, we have a very, very deep PvP experience in Crowfall. It is also very, very off-putting to new players who just want to kind of jump in and get their feet wet. Um, jumping into a dregs is not the best experience. Uh, so we tried to figure out a way to give people a taste of that experience. <laughs> Debbie Sue hates it when I call Hunger Dome our gateway drug, but it kind of is uh, to give people a taste of that experience so that we can um, get them into the idea of the game. They get an idea for how the classes play. And our goal and our hope is that they will then say, hey, this game is really cool. I definitely want to go and invest in the MMO and invest the time necessary to learn how to play my class and to learn how the strategy game works. So that's kind of the whole the whole thing about it. The ECS tournament is running right now. We are now two qualifiers down. So the first two teams have been uh, um, uh, auto-selected themselves, basically, by winning. First two teams have, have made it into finals. And we've got another round of court, uh, qualifiers happening this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, which is really cool. Um, and that's $50,000 in cash and prizes, which is uh, also, I think, worth mentioning. So... So there you go. There's the the quick and dirty on the uh, on the Hunger Dome uh, ECS tournament. Um, what did I miss on that, Blair? What else did you want to talk? Oh, and Dan, if you uh, we I, we are extending the team signups uh, yeah. to try and get some more teams in. So if you guys um, have been sitting on the fence thinking about it, uh, you might as well you know form a team on the website and and jump on in. So I think here's the new uh, here's the new dates. Yeah, we got the new dates up there, and we, um, we we fixed all the problems as far as we know with the drops, so that should be working flawlessly this weekend, and we have a new batch of stuff that we made for this next weekend. Every weekend has a different batch of stuff. Uh, I personally made a bunch of this stuff and uh, worked with the artist to make some of this stuff. It's cool stuff. You're going to want it, um, and you want to put up the slide for May 8th, Emily? We've got our uh, our Twitch spider there. Uh, he's super cool. Uh, we've got the spider badge, and then we've got the no, you didn't emotes. I mean, I think showing up for the emotes is uh, is, is reason enough, man. Those emotes are good, and then the mounts are good. So emotes, uh, emotes are one of those things that that I know that they're an MMO staple. I don't. I personally don't put a lot of. I mean, yeah, they're kind of funny, but. Um, they never make it very high on the list, which is why in, in every game I've ever done, they tend to be one of the last things to come online. You start to have this just slew of new emotes come in. Um, that said, the dance is pretty funny. I think the animators did a fantastic job with the dance, and I certainly see people triggering it. Uh, now we have it in Hunger Dome that when the uh, when it gets down to one team, the hunger cuts off immediately, so that that final team that last doesn't die. And I've seen very, very commonly now, in that last moment before the match uh, ends, that's the time when people kick off their dance emote or their other goofy emotes. So yeah. pretty cool. uh, it, it, it's it's good fun. It, it's good fun. It's uh, and we we now have the system set up where we can just add a, uh, more as we as we need to. Uh, I think. Did you show the uh, the emotes clip that we had? Emily? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did. Yeah. It's okay. Pretty, All right. Well, then let's fun. show May the 9th, which is uh, the next day, which is themed around. Let's see. We've got the wolf in there the number one emote, and the Earth Condemnation Sigil. Cool. So, I, yeah. by the way, with, with, so with our first round, our first weekend of Twitch drops, there were some integration issues that, that happened. So everybody who should have gotten a drop, you will. So I want to say that first. And number two is the nice thing about having these quarterfinals or these, these qualifiers spaced out and everything is it gives us a little bit of time to adjust. So we will have that. Uh, those issues resolved 
um, for the next match. So this is our first tournament ever. So apologies uh, of all the bumps in the road. I'm not hugely surprised given that this is an integration with somebody else's system. And, um, you know, we're, we're still making mistakes. We're still learning. But uh, but hopefully every my, my goal is that every single time we do another match, the tournament gets a little better. We did see that from the first match to the second match. The second match was even more fun to watch. Um, so that's uh, that. If, if that trend continues, this thing is going to be pretty cool by the time finals rolls around. Yeah, no um, one will. No one will, will see those bumps with the drops or any of that stuff in the future, which is great. We work out all the hope. Now. That's the hope. Yep. All yep. right. Anything else on the ECS, or can we move on to the MMO proper, which is we what I really want to the roadmap. Okay. So roadmap update. Let me pull it up here on my screen, too. So I've got it. So so this was the short term list before with some modifications. So I uh, I threw in some general color coding, but mostly it was just to, to make it easier for me to talk through it. Uh, so there's a few things that were on the short term or maybe even on the medium term list that ended up coming forward. Uh, the turn and re- arena we just talked about, the Hunger Dome stuff. Um, Factories was one that uh, that made it out. And so far, the response from that has been uh, extremely positive. We have some round of balance changes coming to it. And we have some things that didn't make it initially that didn't didn't make it to the first round of factories. Has that been resolved yet, Blair? Uh, there's still a couple little tweaks. I mean, we put it out there. Uh, I put up a, a thread in the economy section, got a bunch of good feedback, uh, created tickets, and those things will come online. Like the UI group changed the entire bottom of the UI to say, this is a factory, and this is how much durability making this factory copy will cost you. Right? Better, better feedback to uh, the person using the factory, uh, there's a couple other things that are getting folded in there that we thought were good ideas. That well, the maker's we, mark was a good one, right? Is is if yeah. if you make a copy of something that was made by Bob, the copies will also be tagged as Bob, not tagged by me. I think that was an important one. It was just one that we overlooked originally in the design. Yeah, so uh, a, a lot of great feedback. I appreciate it, and uh, it's now folded into crafting proper, and it's part of the game. So yep. any any tweaks, we uh, will definitely take feedback on like everything else. Yep. Yeah. The import restrictions is on the list that made it in as well. So now we have the ability to do uh, equipment only. We asked. I also had asked for um, for uh, some more export limitations, and I was planning on moving things from participant uh, rewards, the export tokens, participant up to the guild. I actually ended up not doing that. That was as a result of the last Q and A. There was a forum thread that, that users basically were talking about how they didn't like that idea. The players were like, you know, I get why you're trying to do it, but I really don't think it's the best idea. And they made a bunch of really valid points. So I basically stopped that from happening. I said, OK, I, I think the import restrictions is important because that reinforces the land rush. The exports, though, is not that important to me. So, um, so at, I mean, we do have the functionality. It's in there, but I, I decided not to use it. Maybe we'll look at it again in the future, but not not between now and launch. We'll just kind of wait on it. Um, so uh, there you go, proof positive. I, I do read your stuff. I don't always comment on it, but I do read it, and I do make changes based on your feedback. Uh, optimization I put on the list because we have had significant improvements in terms of client optimization and server optimization uh, happen over the last couple months. We are not done there. We still have more to go. Uh, for sure, but the game has has come leaps and bounds from where it was a year ago. Uh, so those are some of the things that were on the maybe we'll get them, maybe we won't list. That the answer is now. Uh, yes, it looks like we have, which is great. Um, well, optimizations was not on the maybe we won't. It just uh, I wanted to make note of it because we have made progress there. Um, there's a few others that were here listed in blue. Those really haven't changed. They're still on my kind of hit list of things that I want. Um, but there's a few others down here that I wanted to bring up that I added in gold that were things that were not originally on the short-term list uh, or that I, I thought were dicey that it turns out we are going to actually get. So the first of those uh, answers a question that you guys have been posing to us for a long while now, which is, you know, we've got this event system for sieges and the siege event system says, you know, Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. I need to log in because I want to attack these guys or because I need to defend my uh, my holdings. Uh, the question that came up was, OK, well, outside of those windows, what do we do? And there are, there are a fair number of answers to this, right? There's caravans and there's outposts and there's bosses that spawn with an event notification and there's harvesting and there's crafting and there's economy. There's a bunch of other stuff. But there was that the challenge was all of that stuff was very ad hoc and with the exception of the mob events it was basically spread around the entire game so if you're if you're really logging in 
to specifically look for PvP opportunities, right? I just want to go and get into some scrapes. Um, the challenge was those activities are interesting and they have other goals, but they don't necessarily guarantee PvP activities. You may or may not, on a caravan run, bump into somebody else. So hot zones, um, just, I stole this term from Shadowbane, but I'll go ahead and describe it. Hot zones are basically a single area in a map or in an overall campaign that goes online, and when it does, it is very visible to everybody. It shows up on the map. It shows up on the schedule. It shows up and says, hey, I am active now. And if you go to that zone, you're going to get basically uh, more loot, you know, double loot, double gold, double experience. It's something like that. Something that is so good that it basically is the milkshake that brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> right. It's the thing mm -hmm. that is going to be enough of a bait that, you know, if you go there you're very, very likely to bump into other people that are also going to go there because the reward is so good. The nice thing about this is that these can fire all the time. In fact, stealing, again, a page out of the Shadowbane book, um, what we're going to do per campaign is we're going to have a hot zone active at all times, and those will probably rotate on a two or three hour basis. So when I log in, I can bring up, we have an event schedule already, right? The seed schedule. I'm expanding that to be an event schedule. You'll log in. You can look at the schedule at the top. It'll say active right now in this particular zone. It's a hot zone. And then you bring up your map. You can see it. The area is on fire. You know that if you go there, um, you're going to be getting the really high rewards, but you're also very likely to find PvP activity. So I think this is a uh, a pretty elegant solution. This is not one that I came up with on Shadowbane, but I, I like it. So we just uh, we went back and took inspiration from it and and basically made our own version of it. Uh, so I think it'll be pretty cool. Yeah, it it goes with our theme of everything we've tried to do so far is to pull as many players into the world as possible. Right? We want people out in the world and. Somewhere in there, we also started messaging. Hey, there's an event over here. This thing is spawned. Um, so it is all about pulling as many people into the world, which creates opportunity for PvP and conflict as people fight over whatever they're in the world for. Right? Yeah, which I, is just. I think that that I think you, what you hit on jumping it jumps forward too on the list, but I'll go ahead and it ties into it. Is I'm we're doing that also with the new player experience right now. Is I've noticed that. That And this is, I make design mistakes like everybody else, believe me, uh, <laughs> they keep me up at night. Uh, one of the design mistakes that I think we made is we've always been designing the game for a large number of players, right? We're always thinking about scalability. And so the challenge is when you're in a situation we are right now, where we're still in beta, um, you don't have the large number of players. So, you know, if a player logs in right now, where are they going to be? Well, they might be in God's Reach. They might be in the EU God's Reach when that's up. They might be in Infected. In Infected, there's actually three different temples, three different low secs, three high secs, and Skypoint. Then you've also got Dregs, usually US and EU as well, and those have their own temples. So effectively, what we had is a situation where every time I added, and you've got the EKs as well, right? So, which is there's N number of those running at any time. Usually it's just a couple, but still, you're dividing your player base up every time they make one of those decisions. And so what you end up with is a smaller and smaller number of people. And we just added uh, Hunger Dome, which, right, is another divisor on the number of people. So the challenge that I've got is you need critical mass for these games to work, right? Nobody wants to log into a world and go, hey, this place is empty. So one of the things that I'm trying to do with the next version is to go back and focus our players down into more into a smaller and smaller place areas. Um, so you'll see that I'm, I'm actually moving a lot of the stuff that was in infection into the God's Reach area so that the we have a break right now where players, new players who come in, play through God's Reach, and then they just kind of fall out because they don't understand this whole idea of going to Infected. So I'm, I'm trying to do a better job of channeling and focusing our players to, uh, not just for conflict, though that's a big part of it, Hot Zones is for conflict, but also just for socialization. I want to get players mixing with and meeting other players because that's what makes this game, uh, makes these kind of games work. Um, so we, you see that I've got updated new player experience. That's what really what that is about is kind of thickening up the broth on that experience a little bit, trying to look at the areas where it works to teach people and where it doesn't, shoring up the weaknesses, and then also just kind of conglomerating them together or consolidating them together. Um, 
So did I cover that one correctly, Blair? I, I, that, I, that was, I kind of jumped from hot zones to new player experience based on what you said. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you definitely jumped to it. it. It's also, we're working on the flow of the NP, right? I mean, the, the first one we had in there, it served its purpose. And now it's time for us to kind of stretch our legs a little bit and kind of expand on some of the things. Uh, we've looked at things that we weren't teaching the players very well. And now we're going to try and, and teach a lot of things. Uh, we have so many uh, deep systems and our current NP really only scratches the surface of a lot. Oh, of it them. does. And, and you notice there was a gap, right? So, <laughs> so, I mean, and it, it was probably pretty apparent, right? So you started in God's reach in an earth temple, and then you went from the earth temple to the sun temple and then there is no moon temple. You just kind of go to the infected. And it ended with a quest where he's like, all right, you've had enough. Go to the infected. And that wasn't that there's a whole additional set of training there that really teaches you how the strategy game work, how the, how the campaigns work that we just didn't we hadn't gotten to yet. So that's the other piece we're doing now is we're filling in that gap. We really need to teach people about the concept of. What is an outpost? What is a fort? What is a keep? Why do I care about those? What are conquest points? And what are glory, wealth, and power and victory cards? Like, what are these things and why should I care about them? So we're doing that. That's a pretty significant effort we're doing right now as well, is trying to kind of create what we call God's Reach Chapter 3, trying to create something that will bridge that experience. And then I want a direct connection to allow players to go straight from that experience into the infected without having to jump back through the lobby. So that's the combination piece that I'm talking about. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of other questions flowing out of this as well, but I do think that it should consolidate people down and create a better bridge. That's really what I'm trying to do, is bridge people better from the early game into the actual game that we built. Right, and a lot of these, uh, a lot of you who are are in chat have been playing for so long. You just kind of take a lot of this stuff as second nature. Yeah, right? for sure. You've seen it Absolutely. or you've learned it. We're really trying to focus on people who are coming in the door, have no idea what Crowfall is. Give them a taste of everything. Teach them the things they need to do to hand them off to the guilds. Right, because the guild experience is really where Crowfall shines. It, it it's based like the, so much of our gameplay is based around having a group of friends. And that kind of goes into our next point, I think, which is the uh, friends and guild management and game. Yeah, for sure. So this is something we wanted to have for a long time. It's just been kind of on the back burner because when you have, you know, while guild management is on the web is not ideal by any stretch, it was functional. So we might as well, we, our assumption was priority wise, we need to be focusing on the things that simply don't exist at all, like like alliances, right? I couldn't do it on the web or anywhere, so we needed to go to get that stuff done. Uh, we finally got to a point where this one bubbled up to the top. Um, we actually, uh, because of, of the Hunger Dome murder stuff, it gave us some of the underpinnings that we needed to do this, some of the glue that tied the website to you know what we call social services, kind of tied the whole thing together. Um, and now that allowed us to, to basically start doing on that. I, I don't know, I, can't, I don't have the screen up, so I can't see if you guys are seeing it, but we actually have a couple mock-ups of uh, the UIs. Um, as we're working on those and we're working on this stuff right now. So we'll be able to soon set up a friends list on your account. You'll be able to invite people. You have pending. You'll do the ignore list through there as well, which is great. So we can move away from uh, slash commands and you'll have guild management in game. Now there's a few pieces of guild management that we're still going to have on the web. Um, guild creation right now, at least will still be on the web, but that's a one time thing. Uh, because that's where the, the crest, the crest creator is. We'll get that moved over eventually. Um, and then, uh, and then the guild store, right? The, the being able to use your guild bank and your, and your crowns to buy things, which actually was offline for a while anyway, uh, that because it's tied to the web store, that'll be necessarily, uh, at the web level as well. Uh, so I don't know, did, I don't think the slides came up or did they come up and I missed them? Oh, uh, I didn't see them. Emily, could you put up the, uh, the guild slides, please? Yeah, the UI mockups. Yeah, there, there we go. go. Yeah. They're up. So there you go. Pretty straightforward. I've got. Uh, I've got. I'll have it. You know, people that are familiar with the alliances UI, you'll recognize stylistically this is very similar um you'll be able to invite people in you'll be able to look at your pending invites you'll be able to cancel invites um uh so i think this will be this will be really helpful now it's you know it's, i can think of a dozen things i immediately would like to add to this 
but you know, crawl, 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 walk, run, as Gordon always says. We got to start somewhere. So getting this in game, I think, is a big, big first step that I think will make a lot of people very happy, especially for such a guild-oriented game, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we want to get people into guilds, and and we knew that we had to build this stuff for. It's not a giant mystery, right? It's just where it it's came just, in priority to other things. It's just the work. Right, right. It's, just, it, the work. it's just the work part, and you gotta get some work ahead of the other work. And it's just we just haven't had time to do that, or there was things that were much higher priority that we had to well, take care and, of. And it's not just a list of priority because when you have a team, right? The if it was just a list of priority, the assign the the, the assumption there is, hey, you know, Susie came available. Let's go ahead and give her this task, and that's right. not always the case, right? You have. You know, artists, you have designers, you have programmers, you have world builders, you have, yeah, you know, I mean, we've got a massive team with very, very different skill sets and they can't all work on all the things. So you've got kind of in each silo, I've got, okay, I have game systems, it has a priority list. I have interfaces, it has a priority list. I have web services, it has a priority list. So, you know, I know that you guys a lot of times will look at a priority and go, well, I don't understand why they put this ahead of this and sometimes you're right it's just a gut call and uh and sometimes it's actually not it's because i was blocked on this or because i knew that setting this up earlier would mean that when this other thing that's currently cooking comes online we're gonna have to rip it out and do it again and that's inefficient so um there's a lot that goes into it but i'm excited to see this one come online i think it's uh uh i think it's really great to to finally get to the point where we're able to look at things like this so uh so twitch drops is still on this list actually i should have moved that up to the white even though I guess arguably since we had issues with it, it can stay right here because we are still working on it a little bit. The other one is uh, voice chat, which um, we've noticed definitely will make a difference in uh, Hunger Dome, but it's not just a Hunger Dome thing as well, uh, either. We're going to also open it up for just groups uh, in game. So I think that'll be a nice one. It's, it's another thing that um, technically the guilds that exist right now may not care that much because they already use Discord. But I think it'll be great for new players that are just coming in because getting them into the community and into the social um, fabric of our game, that's very important. At the end of the day, that's probably the single biggest thing we could do for, for long-term retention. So... Uh, okay, so do you want to go through? I, there's really not a lot of changes on the midterm and the long term uh, slides, as you can imagine, because we're so heads down right now on trying to get all the short term stuff done. We can go through them real quick, um, uh, just to say nothing really has changed here. Um, these are all still things that I want. Uh, the only one that we've talked about in the last few weeks on this list that uh, that um, I can think of is uh, the using XYZ currency for items and vendors. Um, I know that that one popped up um, as something that we might want to do sooner rather than later. Yeah, that, that's the, the design team's uh, favorite ask because it just <laughs> has so many applications because you're like, hey, I want to give out a reward, but I want to give it out so that they can pick the reward via currency. And it's always like, well, we haven't bought that feature yet. So Yeah, so it, it, that's actually the reason. is It's one of those features where you actually get other features that, you, that are unlocked by it. Um, so if we wanted to have, for example, a... Um, uh, like, so one of the things on respec, for example, that we talked about was offering respec for gold. And the problem is the system doesn't really support that. So we'd have to go in and do it. Well, if we could have a different currency, then that might allow us to put respec on a vendor. Or maybe we could just do the respec for gold on a vendor. But using systems as they weren't necessarily intended to give us other features is a great example of that. A campaign reward that gives you some particular type of currency for winning the campaign. And then a specific vendor that has a bunch of rewards that allows you to buy that currency. Like you said, now instead of it just being, hey, I won the campaign, I got this particular reward. It's, hey, I won the campaign, I got a list of rewards and I get to go spend and choose, or I get to build up that currency over multiple campaigns that I can go this spend and use. So we get a lot of uh, additional win out of that one. Um, so that's why that one was brought up again, just recently. Um, uh, the rest are all still on my want list, um, but uh, we'll see. So uh, next one, Emily. All right. I don't up there. Think there's anything on this list that changed uh, specifically? Um, still, some talk about a perpetual guild versus guild campaign. So, 
I actually like that idea a lot. The main concern that I have with adding it right now is it would be yet another divisor on the number of players. Um, so I kind of feel like we need to hit a certain threshold of concurrency before we could bring that on. Uh, though there was some conversation about using that, basically hot swapping it. So in, in the meantime, bring it online and have it up when there's not a dregs, right? And then when a dregs comes up, bring it down. That way it's not necessarily a divisor that would sidestep that problem. It's just a little weird, and I'm not sure what the implications would be. I'd need to um, kind of step through what happens when I own a keep, and then the server goes offline for three weeks, and then the keep, you know, and then the server comes back. Because <laughs> I was, my character, my guild was off playing in a dregs. Would that work? I'd have to, we'd have to look through it. But there has been some uh, some discussion of that. Um, so that that's one that's been there. Uh, and uh, more victory cards, actually. I know that, that uh, we do have somebody in design right now who's looking at trying to increase uh, the, the number and variety of victory cards. Yeah, because, I mean, we're trying to fold in some of the stuff like crafting uh, back into the victory cards because we'd kind of shied away from that for a while when it was more just about killing and uh, the, the, the hardcore PvP activities. But we have so a category. Now they the victory out to be based on conquest points. Right. So we, we have that now, so let's fill out the other areas with the other types of content we have. And that's what this is, is an extension of victory cards so that other systems can link into them and we can give rewards and, and competition within those categories because crafting is a big part of the game. There's lots of people crafting, there's lots of harvesting going on, and there are people who want to uh, participate in some type of competition, and the victory cards do provide that. Oh, there's one note also now that I think about it on that final point, which is UI customization. So if you guys haven't had a chance to play with it yet, give it a shot. But we do now have the option in the settings screen to allow you to move around the game uh, while you're in crafting or while you're, uh, you know, personal crafting or while you have your power tray up or while you have your inventory up. We do have that working. You have to go set the setting on. Um uh, the next step, and, and we actually have interaction working too. So now I can have my inventory up and I run over to talk to a vendor and I hit the F and it brings up the thing and I can close it. And I keep running around. So it, I no longer have to toggle in and out unless I go to combat. The next piece that we are looking at on that is opening up powers as well. So that if I'm in that mode and I trigger a power, it's not going to leave me in that mode because I do need to at that point go into combat for targeting. But at least that uh, will drop me immediately out of it into combat so that I don't have to go and hit the escape key. A little, little bit of a um, uh, quality of life feature, but we are getting a fair number of those quality of life features in now, and they do make like the compass changes and the, the quick trade and the colorization of the, the group members on the group UI and the voice chat. Those things do add up and make a pretty significant difference, surprisingly so, in my opinion. Because nobody gives you credit for that. No, they, you don't get any press right. articles written about you because your compass uh, is now slightly better. But right. you do add those things up, and it makes just a much better play experience. So, But um, it's part of that mountain of, of features that it's just... And you move it one, as you said at one point, one tablespoon at a time. Yeah, it's like moving a mountain a spoonful at a time. That's right. Everybody pays attention to the boulders because they're like, oh, my God, how are they going to move that boulder? That's really amazing. But it's actually not the boulders that kill you. It's the mountains and mountains and mountains of thankless tasks that people just expect to work. Like, nobody's going to, you know, hey, I tried to do this thing and it didn't trigger an error message a feedback error message. That's not glamorous, but somebody has to do that work and it takes hours. So, um, uh, yeah, so that that's, if the, the complexity of these games is overwhelming, but a lot of it is just, I, what do you guys call it? The work back at Sony, right? When yep. you were Sony online, that yep, was your it's phrase. It's just the work. work. Yeah. Right. And it, so. there's just such a huge pile of it and you got to have enough people doing it and you never get any credit for it. But if it's not there, Everybody notices. And what's sad is is that over time, the work has only gone up as well. Because every game that comes out and manages to get its legs under it, like World of Warcraft, right? It's up, it's running now, it's kicking off all this money. They reinvest a ton of that money into an even bigger team who then spends yet another month adding more features and quality of life and more content. So every game that isn't out is now chasing after all the ones that are. It just makes it harder and harder and harder to keep up. So... Uh, but hey, that's what we got in this business for. It's fun. So, yep. all right, next next one. I think is that at the end of the midterms, or is there a long term? Uh, there is a long term. There's two long term slides, son. 
Okay, cool. Uh, this uh, this one I'm pretty sure will not have changed. Um, uh, actually, so there is one on here that is interesting, that is, which is the expanded glory card events. Um, but I don't think we're ready to talk about it now. But there was basically an expansion of uh, what we're doing with our boss mobs a little bit, just to add a little bit more to that event system. Because we do have an event that comes up that says, hey, Spider Queen has spawned. And it was in, you know, it's intended very much like the hot zones to be a PvP hotspot at that point. Um, so we're going back and making those encounters a little bit cooler and adding a little bit more to them, making them more impactful, hopefully so that it will act as bait to draw yeah. to drag people out of the uh, and i think uh explaining a little bit um i won't give it all the way but one of the things that we're trying with this the prototype of these guys that we're working on right now is the concept of when a group does the thing event wise on that parcel we're going to provide parcel buffs for harvesting and we're going to spawn a bunch of extra stuff for a period of time so that, that's kind of in the works now, which is kind of cool, which means all of a sudden you, you do the event thing, everyone on the parcel gets a buff, and then maybe there's three or four X mother loads of a type that spawn. So all of a sudden these events are super cool, and they feed into stuff that you're going to want as a guild. Um, you're going to be there as a guild anyways to do the event, and we'll see how that works out. So uh, we should see that on uh, the next test center. And I'm kind of looking forward to see if we can make it all work. Cool. All right. Oh, I should have put on my short-term list, I should have put water I, now that I think about it. Because that's actually in now. You can run around and see it, which is really cool. Um, it wasn't even on my list. That tells you how far. It wasn't even on my list. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Is there one more long-term slide? Yes. There's an EK one. Okay. And I, I, don't, I don't expect that there's a... A huge amount of additional stuff here, other than we do have some people that are dedicated on just adding general improvements, but none of the big stuff, right? Not they were not the tax system and stuff like that. I just I'm not thinking about it right now. It's not it's not at the top of my list. It'll get there. It's just not there yet. Yeah, and you know the so. UK stuff. Amber's fixing bugs, just a couple bugs a week uh, as things get added, like the new factory features and the cooking update those vendors that are in the ak also saw an update so that they keep parity with the rest of the game so work is still going on in the ek even though we don't have people dedicated to the boulders uh as todd likes to put it of, of those features there's still lots of pebble movement happening in the ek cool oh, uh, i think that's it on the slide part i think that's it unless there's any more I don't, I don't think so. I think that's that's all I had. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So what was next on our list of things to talk about, Mr. Blair? Uh, so uh, we already talked about the uh, the Eternal Champion series. Uh, we showed the uh, UIs for the Friends and Guild update. And now we're down into we can take some questions. Okay. You want to start with, uh, with the forum questions or a few that, that came from the forums? We may have already hit a couple of these. Um, but we can go ahead and hit them. The first one was uh, about crafting factory crafting stations in EKs. What's the deal with that? So when we put the factories in, I kind of wanted everybody in one area so we could get feedback and all of that stuff. So we and we didn't even have the art asset. That what was funny about the factory feature, and I'll, I'll tell you, is Todd just snuck that one in. So that that's he's like, all right, look, I got you uh, simple factories. Because you, you change it to simple factories, right? And he just, like, got Charlie a couple days. Charlie got it in. He's like, hey, factories are ready. And I'm like, what? Oh, shit. Right now i got to build a bunch of content. Because even after the code is done, we still need, like, lots of icons. We need to make recipes. We need, actually, the art asset for the factory station so it looks different. we got to put them in the world. So there was a lot of that that came on just like, well, let's get it in because we got the code work. And uh, we just hadn't built the EK factory station, which actually I built yesterday. And we got the new art in and the particle effects for the station day before yesterday. So things are coming in hot and we are getting to them to you as fast as possible. In the next update, you will be able to craft a factory station for your EK. And then we'll also look at getting uh, one of those stations into the keeps as well with, with the other stations. They're a little bigger, 
Uh, it's kind of a cool model. Uh, it's got some steam and stuff coming off of it. Uh, you guys will be happy. It's everybody loves new art. I mean, who doesn't love new art in the game, right? It's the one thing that nobody nobody will ever dislike, right? It's like, oh, cool, new stuff to look at. Oh, it's pretty, shiny, love it. So you guys will see it next update. All right, next question. This uh, that it, does anyone know? I love that it starts with "Does anyone know?" Sometimes the answer is no. <laughs> we have to go ask around. But this one, I'm pretty sure you know the answer to. Does anyone know if barriers absorb damage after mitigation or before? So what's funny is it's an order of operations question. It, it is, but asking a question like that kind of offhand is always funny because sometimes you instantly know. And this game is so complex that there are 30,000 things going and somebody could have just asked you an EK question. Well, how does this work there? How does this work over here? And you're like, ah, brain explode. This one's pretty easy. Uh, barriers absorb damage post mitigation. Uh, and there you go. But it, it, I always find it interesting how uh, with the new era of everyone in Slack and uh, normally, well, let's say normally back in the office, there's usually a line at my desk where someone, an engineer will come ask a thing and how you want it to work. And now there's 50 Slack messages that will get blasted to you and having to context switch between everything and remember all the details is kind of a challenge. So it, it's definitely one of these when someone just drops a question on your leg, hey, oh yeah, I know that. I know that one, I don't even have to look. So there you go. Yeah. I actually went by the office yesterday and Gordon was there and Brandon was there and everybody, it was otherwise completely empty. There was, there was no one else there. Actually, I think Jacob was there too. Um, but, but the, this, our office is not small, right? It's a significant size for our, for our team. And the place was completely empty. I hadn't been there in enough time that my Wi-Fi password had been dropped by my phone <laughs> just because I've been, I mean, it's weird, right? But it is absolutely true and very, very bizarre uh, having to transition the entire development of this game to everyone working remote. I mean, it's a very weird thing, and it definitely has changed like communication patterns and you know how we handle meetings and stuff like that. Um, and the fact that it's things are starting to thaw right now has brought up some really interesting questions too, because we still have the office, but do we start to have people go back? Well, at that point, at this point now, with our new patterns already instilled, is that going to actually slow us down? So it's really an interesting time from a development standpoint. I'm sure we're not by any means unique in that. Everybody's going through it. The only thing that makes us a little unique is that we're trying to ship an MMO in the same exact period. And that there, there aren't very many companies, at least in the world, who are doing that. So um, anyway, just a bizarre little anecdote for you. But mm -hmm. um, All right, so back to the questions. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Uh, question number three, is it possible to limit uh, claiming with tree seeds to only active keep siege window? Uh, that would make the land rush much better. Um, so, I mean, so what you just said of, of trying to remember how every single rule works all the time, this is one of those for me is we've gone back and forth on this a mm -hmm. couple of times that I, I think we did that at one point and I can't remember if we pulled it out or if it got broken. Yeah, honestly, having to look at this one, uh, we got most of the way and there was a bunch of questions and we're like, you know what? The land rush is going to be kind of gated by gold, right? right. Because of the course. Cost of and then for the longest time, it wasn't because of the import rules. Right. But it is now. But it is now. And so now the question in my head and Shaq can give us feedback on that is... Is the seed cost too cheap? Is there no land rush because everyone's able to acquire the gold for a seed that quickly? Uh, because right now, that's ultimately our limiting mechanism is if you can't bring any gold in, you got to get the gold to buy the seed. You got to get the seed before you can buy the keep. Uh, if you have 20 people, how much gold can you earn in an hour? If you have 50 people, how much gold can you earn in an hour? So all questions, right? Yeah, and all I do think... And, and this will be really interesting seeing how that exact moment, right, the, the time from campaign start with no gold 
to we bought the seed and we got to get it to the keep and we've got to actually plant it, how hot zones will figure into that, right? Because if we were if effectively saying that that's the place to go if you want to get the most gold, I think that's going to be that's going to be a giant driver. So um, I think that'll be really cool. I actually think the hot zones uh, addition is going to touch the game in a handful of different locations, at different places like that, where the yeah. tendrils will kind of you know take things that were already there and kind of soup them up and make them much stronger. Yeah, and every system that we add like that, and this is just for the edification of chat, is there are ripple effects for things that we're not even thinking about now that are going to have to get looked at after we put in something like that, right? Because all of a sudden there's more gold coming into the system. Do we need to sink more gold out to compensate for that? I mean, it's just, it's a lot of uh, a lot of interlinking systems. It's like a big old spider web, and yet... You touch this strand over here and this one over here jiggles. So you have to kind of look at all of the systems. It looks like we're giving away an elk mount right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, is there a question there? Oh, wait, oh, elk mount. Um, so, yeah, it is, uh, it, it's definitely something we want feedback because we want that land rush to be exciting. We want lots of people, in fact, darting for a hot spot, which will make a lot of fun conflict right as the campaign starts. And that also leads to a good point, and I wanted to talk about this. The current values for building a keep, ha uh, the buildings in a keep, were tuned to kind of our shorter campaigns. We've kind of gotten to the point now where we're starting to make longer campaigns because, yes, we know a series of short, quick dregs campaigns burns the community out because they're just there, they're over, they're done. You're doing so much uh, effort every yeah, single the night. The investment of investing in your city for such a short period of time just doesn't make sense, right? Right. So for sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll probably look at the values and go, Is are the current values too cheap? Uh, I, I'm almost guaranteeing every single one of those because they were all tuned for a fairly quick campaign. And also, going along with that, not being able to bring in building materials anymore also means that people aren't instantly building cities. So yet another nice ripple effect from the uh, equipment-only import style, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so another question came in, and it uh, and now that it came in, it made me realize, hey, yes, we do have an answer for that, and I have a piece of art that relates to it. So I started scrolling back to see if I can find that piece of art. Uh, so let's see if we can grab another question, and they'll buy me a minute to see if I can find the piece of art. This is being responsive now. We're just I'm going to go try and find some art that we weren't planning on showing. Let's see if I can bring it over and give it to you. What's the next question on the list? Uh, the next question is, how can you make the infected feel more deadly and less risk-free farming? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's, well, so we have moved in that direction already. Um, uh, some, and, and with the combination um, of what I mentioned of moving infected back into the GR experience, it means that we need graduated levels of risk, right? from the safety zone of the temple all the way out to sky point. Um, so why don't you talk about that a little bit and let me see sure. if I can find, yeah, uh, let me see if I can find so that. So one of the challenges is we don't want, uh, we, we want God's reach to kind of be an area where you learn about the game. You, you maybe meet some other people. You, you link up with people in chat. We've got people in there teaching you things. But we don't want it a spot where our veterans come back to to farm things risk free. Because the goal that we said earlier, which is we want people out in the world creating opportunity for PvP doing things, right? And if everybody's huddled up in a safe zone, then that's not really meeting that goal, right? So we're gonna look at making it so that gold starts dropping from inventory in the infected areas so we can start getting into that. Yes, the world is kind of a risky place and there really isn't a 100% spot to just sit and farm, right? That's that, that's always the, the, the weird crux we get, which is, yeah, these rewards you're putting in sound pretty good, but I could just go over to God's Reach or Infected and sit there and it's risk-free. And even though it's maybe 75%, 50% of the reward that you're giving out over there, it has this risk-free tag associated with it. So, <laughs> nice. The giveaway word is Blair's Kitty. <laughs> um, 
So All right, that, I, found that, I found that art and I passed it over to uh, to Emily. She said, "Give her a minute." So we but we can go ahead and take the question. So um, the question was specifically uh, about chiefs and kings, because um, one of the things that we so so. Players may not even realize this because we don't do a very good job messaging it. And we don't train people in it because the quest line that was intended to train it as part of God's Reach Chapter 3, which, as I talked about earlier, is not in yet. That doesn't exist. But there's actually different ranks of mobs, right? We have, you know, general kind of normal thug level mobs. Then you've got the next level up, which is like lieutenants. And then you've got uh, chiefs and you've got kings. There's actually bosses all the way up to like the ancient Griffin style boss that we've got in Hunger Dome, right? Which is um, kind of it's it's the, it's not really a raid boss, but it's our equivalent, right? It's it's the the big, really tough monster that you better bring a bunch of friends if you want to take it out. So one of the things that is problematic for us is that a king will really wipe you if you're alone, and it in the same if you're fighting through a bunch of mobs in an abandoned village. And you manage to stumble upon an Iroquois that looks just like the other Iroquois, but he happens to be a chief or a king, you're probably going to die. And there really wasn't enough indication. I mean, there is some if you know what to look for. Like if you mouse over them, it does change what their 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 you know their health indicator looks like. But it, it's not very obvious. So one of the things that I asked was, hey, you know, given that these are actually normal mobs, can we get in? And this was the question was, can you guys get in some custom art for these guys? And so, you know, going out and creating completely new custom art is something that we don't have a lot of time for right now because we're spending a lot of time working on other things like the Twitch drops and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, it did seem like doing variants of the mobs was a cool idea. So one of the options I said was, you know, can we do different colors? Can we do different accessories? Can we put different particle effects on them? Can we scale them up a little bit? Can we do a flaming throne or a flame, flaming crown above their head? And so the, um, the answer came back on uh, was, ooh, Flaming Crown, that would be really cool. So we did a couple of concepts of what those bosses might look like, and that is something that is now already already working its way through the system. So um, so anyway, so that's coming. I, I did pass the art over to Emily. I don't know if I gave her She's enough time. waiting on you to tell her. When she oh, yeah, comes. sorry. Yeah, go ahead and bring them up. So here's some, here's some examples of what that would look like. Um, so... So I think it's cool. I, we're also going to add to their name tag. We're going to just directly call out underneath the name of the creature, like, hey, this is a solo boss, or hey, this is a, a group level boss. So I think that that'll help. I mean, at the end of the day, we're not a PvE game, but we do have PvE in the world. So we need to, this is the kind of quality of life thing I was talking about, where it really adds up and it makes a, it makes a big difference. When you take all of these things together, um, it just makes the game overall um, feel a lot cooler and a lot better. So, so there you go. Little bit can be done, I think. So, yeah, I'm looking at the at the third shot here. Yeah, everyone's asking when can we get them as transmox. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. That might be a bit problematic, though. Uh, but yeah, but that is, that is pretty cool. So thank you, Emily, uh, and, and thanks to our art team for the quick turnaround on that. I think it's I, I, I think that's going to be a, a nice addition. Um, so okay, back to the list of questions. Um, so, so that's uh, the, that's the question from the partners forums. Yep. Are you ready for the forum forums? Um, yes, I think so. Alrighty, we have a question that is currently at the end of Dreg's campaign. Players are unceremoniously dumped to the lobby. Would it be possible to have a Hunger Dome match at the end instead of where the queue is populated by players from said Dreg's campaign selected through a variety of possible methods? Huh, okay, that's an interesting one. So I wouldn't, I mean, it couldn't be actually a Hunger Dome match, right? Because Hunger Dome matches are very specifically geared to have 12 teams of five people with very specific rules. But the idea would be, can we repurpose a bunch of the pieces out of that um, to to bring the campaign to a conclusion? I always had the uh, the you know the dream of having a cataclysm at the end. In fact, I think early on in Kickstarter, Dave even did a concept right where he tried to show like chunks of the world ripping away or disappearing or something like that. Um, I do think it's a cool idea. Uh, so um, 
it's certainly, I mean, it's not something that we could jump on immediately, but it's definitely something I'd like to put on that uh, list of long-term things to think about and see if we can figure out a way. I'd, I would love to have the campaigns come to a more um, uh, specific conclusion. I think that would be pretty cool. Alrighty. Our next question, can we get some hourly POI obje objectives to fight over? So there's always at least one PVP hotspot for players you to gather throughout can. the day. They are <laughs> called hot zones. And I'm delighted to say that they are being worked on right now, and we hope to have them coming in the next version. Um, and, and furthermore, uh, tying them into the event tab. So that was the other thing to me that was really critical. This is something Shadow Me didn't have. So Shadow Me just had... When you logged in the game, it put a message in your chat that said current hot zone is here. I would like to be able to have it uh, something that's referenced. So when I'm in the game, I can say, OK, where should I go? I can pull up my map. I can see it on the map and then I can pull up my event schedule and I can see, oh, here's where it is in this world right now. Um, so all of that is, is being worked into the current design. Um, but yes, is the short answer. We, I, I love the idea. We're going to do it. Doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Our next question, is there a plan to add consumables to the list of items allowed to be imported into the campaign, i.e. harvesting potions, combat, harvesting food? Yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that, Blair? We certainly could. I mean, it's now that we have the import rules set up, it's pretty easy for us to go in and flag things on or off. Um, and we, we also added now you can't sell items to vendors, right? Because that was a nice, easy way to sidestep the you can't bring in gold. Well, now you can't sell those items to vendors either, so they're really for use only. Um, I guess the question I would ask is, um, you know, uh, maybe, is, is it worth it enough, right? Is it worth it to give up an import slot um, to bring in those? I don't know, what do you think, Blair? Uh, what I thought was interesting was the, le the, the logic leap to get there, which was, hey, I slot these things out. They're technically equipment. And I was like, yeah, I guess if you look yeah. at it from that way... You, you do put them into a slot. Uh, it's a it's a short it's more of a shortcut than a slot because it's not mechanically. I don't think of those as slots. But when I put on my player hat and look at it, I'm like, yeah, those seem like slots. Uh, why why didn't we allow that? So to me, it just seems like uh, we didn't do it purposely. But from a mechanical sense, they aren't really slots, which is why they didn't make it onto the list. You know, and actually, so, I, I can just, now that I'm thinking through it, this is real-time design. Now that I'm thinking through it, I can see a really strong argument economy-wise to do it. Because there will be some players who are more interested in the economy game and not interested in going into dregs. And this would give them something that they would have a value to sell to the players who are going into dregs. So it strengthens that economy loop. And so for that reason alone, I'd be in favor of it, unless there's some reason that we think that it might cause an issue. Um, uh, I think I, I, you know, unless it would cause somebody to be able to shortcut the, the land rush or something like that, if we can't come up with any compelling uh, issues like that or exploits, then I, I think I'm going to vote in favor. So. Yeah. yeah, good suggestion. Like it. Yep. Our last question is, are you going to consider adding some kind of rewards to <laughs> player rewards oh. to regular Hunger Dome matches? Example, fifth place. He's just totally rewording everything I'm reading. Timmy is on the keyboard. So my cat walked over to the keyboard <laughs> and my cursor is right there. So that's why all of those okay, words. I didn't know what was going on with you I'm guys. Like, now where I is my question going? <laughs> Okay, so well, I, I got that the point is the high level. Can you put rewards on Hunger Dome? Uh, so the, um, the the answer to that is a bit nuanced. So let me let me talk. It's a good one to end on because there's actually a bit to talk about there. So we didn't want a few things. Number one, we don't eventually right. We we we're tracking Elo, and eventually our goal is to start to have teams and players sorted into matches based on that ELO score. If you give rewards that can be taken into campaigns, that has two problems, uh, in my opinion. One is, I don't know if necessarily we want Hunger Dome to become the preferred way to get things for campaigns. That kind of shortcuts the export process of other campaigns and this economy loop that I'm talking about. So I've got a bit of a concern there. The other one is, I don't want the player behavior that would start to potentially happen where people are purposely tanking their ELO score so that they can get into weaker matches just so they can get those rewards. I want ELO to actually be something you're trying to climb, 
So that's the challenge is you start to get weird secondary behaviors. Where I do think we could do it and where I do think a reward structure would be appropriate would be to put some kind of reward structure on ELO and maybe have those rewards not be directly imported like here's a bunch of, you know, here's a bunch of uh, purple ore. Like that's probably not a great one. But if it's something like, hey, give me that cool Seder boss fire crown skin transmogrification for my character and that's on an elo reward that would be pretty cool so i do plan eventually for us to get to doing rewards i just we have to be careful about it because what we've done is we've kind of taken now a, a handful of different game modes and we've tied them all together and it's working you know, pretty well, actually, as far as uh, one of them not bleeding over to the other import and exports does a good job of that. Uh, we just have to be careful about that because, I mean, other games don't do that. Like other games don't have, you know, all of these different game modes and they're all tied together with import export rules and my characters jump between different MMO servers. That's very unique to us. So because of that, we need to just be very, very careful that we don't do anything that gums up the works. Ideas that sound great at first blush, sometimes when you look into them, the implications of them, you're like, oh, that could cause some major issues. No, we can't really do that. So, so there you go. There, there's your quick answer. I like the idea of rewards. We just have to be very careful about how we do it. Agree. Agree on that. And that's the end of our questions. So right. as, we, as we close this out, uh, we go to the end, which is always become a backer by the 24th of April, and you'll get this month's Crow Award plus all of the upcoming rewards that follow. So we're going to show you what the May reward is, and it is the May of Seahorse. It is a very nautical-themed horse. Oh, did somebody ask for April? No, that, this is May's. Um, and I think that's about it, Todd. Cool. All right. So, so just to go back uh, through the, the other list of things, so first and foremost, always I want to thank everybody for who's backed us or just watched us with anticipation or just showed in, uh, sh showed up to our live stream to check it and th see how things are going. Um, you guys are awesome. And uh, we are always uh, thankful for having you along on this ride with us. Uh, number two, I want to thank everybody for participating in or watching the first two qualifying rounds of the ECS tournament over the weekend. Uh, if you missed them uh, and you missed the Twitch drops associated with them, don't worry. This weekend, we have another two rounds. Uh, it is, uh, what is it, 2 o'clock Eastern? Is that correct? Two That's 2 o'clock Central, is it? 1 o'clock Eastern. Sorry, Central, sorry. One Central. Yeah. Yeah, so 1 o'clock Eastern, so that makes it noon Central. Isn't it? I think I got my times completely wrong. <laughs> Somebody read out the times for me. That always confuses me. Anyway, it's this weekend. <laughs> Peak time for Twitch on Saturday oh. and Sunday. 12 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. All right, there we go. So Saturday and Sunday, qualifiers 3 and 4. Uh, if you're showing up late, um, just a reminder that we would love to have some more teams sign up. Because uh, more teams equals cooler matches, and there is still time to apply. So uh, you can check that out on our main webpage and click on that ECS badge, and it'll tell you how to apply with your team of five. Um, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, uh, Razor, our, our, our kind of uh, flagship premium sponsor. And I also want to thank uh, both Intel and Alienware as well, uh, our secondary sponsors. Um, uh, that the, the things have been really fun to watch, and I expect them to just get more and more fun as as the anticipation uh, increases, leading into the uh, team that's going to win the fifty thousand dollars in cash and prizes. Um, and that should be a pretty compelling reason to get a team in. If nothing else, it, it should be fun. And I think we also are giving out a reward now for teams for participating too, just a digital reward that basically says, "Hey, I participated." So yeah, we've got an ECS cool badge. Uh, we we created a badge uh, the last couple of weeks to uh, for everyone who participates. Cool. Uh, uh, and again, thanks for coming out. Follow us on the the, the Twitches, the the Twitterverse, Twitter, all of the yes, all of the Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Uh, thank you guys as always for tuning in. Keep those questions coming. And I guess until next time, we will. I'd say see you in game, but we'll definitely see you at the tournament if nothing else. Yeah, and we're gonna raid Crusader W next, so we'll just seamlessly hand you off to him. He can answer. All kinds of questions for you if you have them. Uh, thanks for all of the support from our streamers and the community. Every time you help new people, that helps the game overall as a whole. right? So always help people who have questions. 
And because again, it just makes the community stronger. And those people may turn into guildmates someday. So yep. it all it all helps and all adds up. Or so, sheep uh, for you to slaughter. Either one. It could go either way on that. Right. <laughs> right. So cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Very excited about the, the next couple of weeks and what we have in share for you. Thanks for coming out. And we will see you next month.